Today's lesson is lesson 2.3. On your paper, it says lesson three, but up in the corner, it says 2.3. Um, this is the correct paper. It should look like this. Make sure you're finding the lesson page in that packet that looks like this. It's identifying proportional and non-proportional relationships in tables. So today we're going to talk about tables just like we did in class today. And yes, we're going to look to see is something proportional in a table. The idea of ratio, rates, and proportionality is the major concept of seventh grade math. So you will see that we're going to work on this for several days. A long time we're going to talk about ratios, proportion, and rates. Um, so starting with this example here, you have been hired by your neighbors to babysit their children on Friday night. You are paid $8 per hour. That's a rate, $8 per hour. Every hour you babysit, you get $8. So one hour gives you $8. As you can see, one hour would give you $8. Two hours, so it says complete the table by relating your pay to the number of hours. Two hours, so two times eight would give me 16. Three times eight would give me 24. Four times eight would give me 32. Four and a half, oh, maybe I'll come back to that one. Five times eight would give me 40. Now, four and a half I know is between four and five. This is one way I could do it. So what's halfway between, or just adding half of my rate of pay, four, uh, four dollars on, halfway between 32 and 40 is four more, which would be 36. Six hours would be six times eight, which is 48. A half of an hour is only gonna get me eight, half of eight dollars, so I'm gonna add on four more dollars only here, or six and a half, times eight will give me $52. So my pay is based on the number of hours that I'm working. Based on the table above, there's a question here, it says, based on the table above or to the left here, is pay proportional to the hours worked? How do you know? The answer is yes, pay is proportional. Pay is proportional. We're going to be writing a lot in this unit and explaining how do I know. Pay is proportional to hours because every ratio of pay to hours is the same. Every ratio is the same. Pay to hours. 8 to 1. 16 to 2. 24 to 3. 32 to 4. 36 to 4 and a half. 40 to 5. 48 to 6 and 52 to 6 and a half. It is proportional. Pay is proportional to hours because every or each, every ratio of pay, and notice I put the pay first, the eights, 1624, pay to hours is the same. And I could write all of them. 8 to 1, 16 to 2, 24 to 3, and so on and so forth. 32 to 4, 40 to 5. Yes, I could copy all of these and I could show the ratio of pay, notice pays on the top, Pay came second in the chart, but it's on the top in my ratio. Pay to hours. They are all the same ratio. They are all an eight to one ratio. They are all equivalent. And every measure of hours for each hour, I multiply by eight to get that corresponding measure of pay. So each time I did multiply by eight, that's how I filled in the table to get it. So I could look at it as a pay to hours worked ratio or an hours worked times eight to get the pay. On the next page, for examples one through three, determine if y, y is second in the table here, whatever the y variable is. In this first example, it's snowfall, is proportional to x. X is on the left side. It's first in the table. 
So y is proportional to x. Justify your answer. The table below represents the amount of snowfall in five counties in inches of hours uh, to hours in a recent winter storm. Well, we live in Monroe County, and I know sometimes that Livingston or Wayne or uh, Ontario County get more snow on the same day than we do. Sometimes Webster schools are closed and we're not because they live closer to the lake. So I, I'm betting that snow is not proportional to where you live in the counties. So let's just try here. So y is proportional to x. So I'm gonna do y over x. y, the second thing in the table, 10 over two. Well, that's a five to one ratio. 12 over six. Well, that's a two to one ratio. 16 over eight, that's a two to one ratio. Five to two and a half, that's a two to one ratio. And 14 to seven. Well, these are all two to one, but this one is not a two to one ratio. That's a five to one ratio. Snowfall is not proportional. So I'm answering in a full sentence, which means you, yes, you do have to start with a capital letter. And a lot of you are not showing periods at the end of your sentences. Snowfall is not proportional to time because the ratios are not all the same or they are not equivalent. The ratios, well, because the ratios are not equivalent or not equal or not the same. Equivalent, and I think it's gonna get cut off on the side there, equivalent, not equivalent. They are not the same ratio. So number one, the answer was no. Snowfall is not proportional. Number two, the table below shows the relationship between cost of renting a movie to the number of days you rent it. So the cost is the Y and the number of days is the X. So is the ratio Y over X always the same? Okay, so two to six, is that the same ratio as three to nine? Is that the same ratio as eight to 24? Is that the same ratio as one to three? Well, this is it, two sixths, two to six, that's a one to three ratio in lowest terms. Three to nine, that is one to three ratio in lowest terms. Eight to 24, that's a one to three ratio. They are all in the same ratio. So yes, cost is proportional. Cost is proportional. Proportional to days rented, to days rented, because all the ratios are equivalent. They are equivalent. They are equal in measure. That's what the word equivalent means. They are all the same. They are all equal. They all equal one to three, a ratio of one to three. Third example. The table below shows the relationship between the amount of candy pounds bought and the total cost. This is like bulk candy. You go and buy a bunch of it, put it in a bag and you weigh it on the scale. They're gonna charge you the same amount for each pound you buy. Well, let's see if that happens. So cost to pounds. So again, y over x. So is the relationship between the candy, the pounds bought, and the total cost? So pounds and the total cost. 10 over five. Uh, eight over four. That's a two to one. 10 over five is a two to one, or five is half of 10. Four is half of eight, I could think of it that way. 12 to six, or 12 divided by six is two. That's a two to one. 16 to eight, that's a two to one ratio. This one's pretty easy. And 20 to 10, that's all, they are all a two to one ratio. Yes, they are all equivalent. So is this relationship between candy and cost a proportional relationship? Yes, 
cost is proportional to pounds. It's like when you put it on the scale when you buy a bulk candy. Cost is proportional to pounds. The more you buy, the more it costs to pounds. Because all the ratios are equivalent. So when we do this in class tomorrow, hopefully you're going to use this same language. Either yes, they are proportional, or no, they are not, because the ratios are not equivalent. But here the ratios are equivalent. They are equivalent. It's a good math vocabulary word, so we're going to keep using it. Cost is proportional to pounds because all the ratios are equivalent. They're all the same, two to one. Number four. Randy is planning to drive from New Jersey to Florida. Randy recorded the distance traveled and the total number of gallons used every time he stopped for gas. Hmm, assume that the miles driven is. So they're telling us this is a proportional relationship. Miles driven is proportional to the amount of gas consumed in order to complete this table. So they must be in the same ratio. So, if I take 216 and I divide it by 8, will I get that same ratio or same rate, 54 divided by 2, oh, 54 divided by 2, 54 divided by 2, hmm, 54 divided by 2, that's a 27 to 1, or... When I divide by 2, I'm going to get 27. I could call it 27 to 1. I'm using 27 miles for every gallon of gas. 216 divided by 8, using a calculator, yes. I'm going 27 miles on every gallon of gas. That's a well-known rate, 27 miles per gallon. You see it on com uh, commercials for cars. Oh, this car gets 35 miles per gallon. That's what we're doing here, miles per gallon, so finding the same ratio or the same rate, 27 to 1. So those two, I'm taking really, I'm going to do it as the multiply way. 2 times 27 gives me 54. And 8 times 27 will give me, on 8 gallons of gas, times 27 miles per gallon, I'll go 216 miles. So 4 times 27... That will give me 108, filling in the table. 189, oh, they gave me that one, so I have to go backwards. I have to divide by 27. That's the inverse of multiplying. These are multiplying times 27, times 27. So then since they didn't give me the gallons, I've got to take the miles and divide by 27. 189 divided by 27 will give me 7 gallons. Um, 10 times 27 will be 270. That's easy to multiply by 10. Just put that zero at the end. Then 12 times 27 times 27, and I'm showing my math here, 324. So if you have 12 gallons of gas in your tank, you can go with this vehicle, 27 times 12, 324 miles. We're going to do the same thing tomorrow. You are not doing the classwork page that goes along with this. That's it for your homework. I'll see you in class tomorrow.